Hi, I'm Brian Vibberts from Vibberts Mixing, six-time Grammy Award-winning recording and mixing engineer. I've had the honor to work with artists such as Chikoria, Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey, Sting, Green Day, Metallica, Ice Cube, Tony Bennett, and many more. Today, I want to show you a recording and mixing tool that I use quite a bit. It's the Acoustic Sciences Studio Trap. I use them on most of the recordings I do, and I'm going to show you why. So let's start in an unlikely place, very reflective, the bathroom. Today I am going to be talking to you about these studio traps from Acoustic Sciences, otherwise known as ASC. And you can see I'm in a bathroom. Yes, it's weird. Uh, this is the best place. It's almost all tile in here. Uh, so I am going to show you the before and after of how the Acoustic Sciences studio traps actually change the sound in any room. This is kind of an extreme example. You wouldn't really record in here. But first I'll show you this room and then I'll show you another room that's a little bit more of a practical recording space. So this is what the room sounds like with no studio traps. As you can hear, there's an echo. It's mostly tile in here, granite here, but the all the all the walls the floor is all tile, so it's about 90% tiled room. Got a mirror over here, so everything's reflective in here. This is what it sounds like without the studio traps. I've said this for years. You have to hear it to believe it. If you're um, listening and watching this video now, I highly encourage you to listen to this in headphones so you can hear the the drastic difference between what it sounds like without the studio traps and then what it sounds like with the studio traps. This is like 90% tiled room and I'm speaking the same volume and it sounds completely different. It sounds usable in here. I could use this as a studio. You would never record in here, but this is an extreme example. So this is what it sounds like with the studio traps. Test, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a QSF, a quick sound field setup. You can tell because these dots up here are going towards the inner part of the circle. That's the reflective part of the studio trap. I'll talk about that in a moment. Without the studio traps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Test, one, two, three, four. Test, one, two, three, four, five, six. And one more time, this is what it sounds like with the studio traps in the room. It's, uh, I mean, I can, I don't have headphones on, of course, you can see, but I mean, I can hear it acoustically in the room. It sounds really, really good. So now you've seen the tiled room in the bathroom with and without the studio traps. So now let's look at more of a more reasonable recording space in the house, if you were recording in the house. This is just a normal living room. So let's do the same with and without the studio traps in this room. But I'm also gonna tell you how I use it in different ways, the, the studio traps, and some more information about them as we, we build this. So um, let's get started. So this is what the room sounds like now with the studio traps around me in a QSF configuration. QSF means quick sound field. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, let me move the microphone a little bit here. Okay, so how this works is the front this is split in half. One half is reflective and you can tell what part is reflective by the knob up top. And then the back part of it here is absorptive. So it reflects on one side, absorbs on the other. Right now, I have all of these uh, knobs pointed towards the inside of the circle. So all of the sound is being, you know, from the sound source, which is my voice, is being bounced back off the reflective parts of the studio traps and then 
kind of staying within the circle for the most part. And with this setup, the QSF setup, it actually boosts the direct sound between 3 and 5 dB, which can be um, and has been measured on an SPL meter. So if you want it to be an alternate way, you can just twist these and have the reflective side out and have the um, you know, absorptive side within the circle. Sometimes I like to do that. So you can kind of play around to see which you prefer. So another cool thing about these is you can adjust the height with just half twist down there and you can have this, you know, mid size there, or you can go all the way to the floor. So why would this be important? Well, I've used them all like this, all the way down to the floor around a guitar amp, and believe it or not, it sounds awesome. Um, it makes the guitar really uh, sound tight, like a tighter sound around an amp. It was an experiment that I tried, because at first I thought, it probably won't make a difference, but I was actually delighted to hear what it did to the sound. Also, at this height, you could have an acoustic guitarist sitting on a chair, and this would be like the ideal height for that. If it was going to be more mid-size, kind of like the mid-size there, uh, that could be possibly around a percussionist or a saxophone uh, player, someone that might be standing up or maybe still sitting down. For vocals, I like to have it all the way up, lock it into place, half turn. Uh, for, for vocals, for choirs, the first time I ever used the studio traps was with Michael Jackson, with Bruce Swedeen at the Hit Factory in 1994, and I heard him for the first time there. And like I say, you know, to hear it is to believe it because they really make a great difference in the sound of the recording. And they're easy to work with. You can easily move them. You can alter them, the height, the, the distance around. If you want a tighter, smaller room, you can, you know, room sound, you can bring these closer in. If you want um, more, more reflections from the real room, you can expand the circle. So the studio traps control the reflections of the room and how it's doing this and really kind of how it works is when the sound goes, you know, from the original sound source, right now that's my voice, it goes and hits the reflective side in the QSF and brings that direct sound, more of that, back into the microphone. Now, in between, the sound does go, you know, in between the, the studio traps, and when it goes through, it kind of gets... Uh, bent a little bit and it loses energy and then it goes and hits the wall and comes back and of course on the other side is an absorptive side so that's absorbing the energy from the sound wave but also of course some of it is getting back through but it's kind of bent uh, and and loses more energy as it comes through so by that point the the room sound you know the the sound going back to the walls that coming back has lost enough energy where uh, it's, it's, you know, not as troublesome when it's mixed with the direct, direct signal. One of the reasons why we keep some distance in between the studio traps is so you still do get some natural sound. Uh, if, I mean, if you really wanted this to sound like a, a dead sound without any room, acu uh, you know, a characteristic at all, you would just bring these right together, like, you know, side to side, you know, going side to side, and you'd have less of a, of a, you'd have a less of a room characteristic when they're side to side. But for me recording, I like to have a little bit of the room in there. So it sounds a little bit more natural. So in the next segment, I will show you with light how what I was just talking about with the, with the sound waves going through uh, in between the studio traps, what that actually looks like with light. It's experimental. We'll see what it looks like.
as you can see, along the floor, there's a shadow and then a beam of light, a shadow, a beam of light. So that's exactly what's happening with the sound waves, where the sound comes through in certain areas through the studio traps, and then kind of diffuses uh, and bounces around, loses energy when it hits the walls, the ceiling, the floor, and then it comes back towards the studio traps. And then it kind of diffuses again. It keeps losing energy. So by the time it gets back to the circle, it's lost enough energy where it doesn't really matter with the sound. So you can see along the walls, the ceiling, the floor, it's just kind of the same everywhere where you see like a shadow, light beam, shadow. So that's kind of what's happening with the sound. We use the fog machine and you can see how the light is traveling through the quick sound field in between the studio traps. Uh, as you see and, and you've heard throughout the video, these studio traps make a huge difference in, in any room. In, and I, I mean, I even bring these to recording studios and, and they think I'm crazy because they think, what, our acoustics aren't good enough? But uh, I love using them on anything and everything. So uh, I've used them on acoustic guitar, percussion, drums, choirs. Um, actually, I've even brought them around some you know, piano and, and electric guitar amps. So, I mean, I use them for everything. They... they increase the sound uh, you know going into the microphone and they make the room sound better all the time. So if you want more information just go to the official website acoustic and thanks again.